Third and 11. Could be a free play. Flags fly. How? Oh. Dropping a dime. Oh. John Bates. We're back on Jay Sports Bar, continuing our uh, Super Bowl week tour, if you will. Jay Tuss alongside former Boise State great Kay Calacanillo. Going to catch up with another Boise State legend from the past today. Uh, what is your favorite John Bates story real quick? Favorite moment? So the me nicest and, guy ever. Yeah, What's your favorite one? the best. So John Bates and I, we were locker right next to each other okay. uh, his last year. And so my favorite moments with him was coming in after a practice or a game and just sitting down and catching up because he honestly taught me a bunch as a player and a person because I'd go against him almost every single day in practice um, with him playing tight end and me playing nickel. So sharing those moments post-practice or post-game in the locker room together was always my, my favorite. Well, without any further ado, the 2021 fourth-round draft pick of the Washington Commanders, John Bates, joins us now. And uh, I guess first things first, John, season's finally over. You're getting a chance to relax. How are we doing? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me on, fellas. Um, yeah, no, it's been good. I've been, you know, a little chance to relax. Just got back from, you know, seeing some family back in Oregon. And so... Um, now kind of starting to get back into working out a little bit, getting the body moving after, you know, two or three weeks of not doing too much. But, uh, you know, I'm doing good and can't complain, man. I don't know whether to ask you about your pops first because I'm a big fan of Gino. <laughs> but I, I think Gino would be disappointed if I didn't start with asking you about dad life. Uh, first off, congratulations to, to you and your lovely Thank wife. You. But um, you, you picked right in, in basically the, the middle to end of a season to, to take on this task. Uh, how, how's it going so far? <laughs> Dude, it's been good. Yeah, we uh, we got lucky and it, you know, it panned out towards the end of the season. Um, luckily enough, you know, both of our parents were able to make it out um, and help my wife Keegan out for the first month when football and baby and everything was so new. It was kind of crazy. So, um, you know, that's been really good. But, um, you know, dad life's been awesome, man. I've been enjoying every second of it. Um, our daughter, Georgia, she just turned three months yesterday. Mm -hmm. And so it's just every week, every day, it's something new. And, you know, um, you know, it's really brought the best out of me, too, as mm -hmm. a person. And I, I just I just look so forward to, you know, continuing to being her dad and being trying to be the best dad I can. It's the best. It That's the great. Best. JB, you were uh, you were one of the best guys in terms of preparation in football and in the locker room day in and day out. What's in the dad world? I hear I'm not a dad, but I have friends who are becoming parents and they say, you think you're prepared. And then as soon as it happens, everything goes out the window. What's that experience been like for you? Dude, it is like so much learning on the go. I'm really lucky that my wife, Keegan, like we have nieces and nephews that she, I mean, kind of helped raise. And so she had a ton of general knowledge, but really for me, I didn't have a ton of experience with like little babies and stuff. And so, Every day, it was just learning to adapt to learn on the fly, you know, especially like the first month, first two, when, you know, you're learning, they're sleeping, they're eating, you know, their habits and all their little cues. And so um, it's honestly like kind of relatable to football and just having to learn and adapt to these situations and kind of just having to go on the fly and, you know see what works out and see what doesn't. So it's a lot of a lot of learning curves to yeah. the being a dad. Being a girl dad's awesome too. Like I my I had my but, daughter, she was first and um, I was like a little nervous about that and I'd be I'd be lying to you if like I told you that at the gender reveal party when I saw, you know, the, the pink confetti, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't just a little bit disappointed, but then like I got to experience it and I it's the best. It's the best. Like, she's your little girl. Dude. She's your sweetheart. You're going to treat her like she's a princess. And I, I love it. I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, I have added a, a little boy to the lineup since then. But, um, John, like, are, are you getting up in the middle of the night? Like, what, what, what does that look like? I'm really fortunate that my wife is a trooper All -star. and yep. she she does a lot of the work in the middle of the night. So a lot of credit to her. But, um, you know, we've kind of just gotten like this little routine down where, you know, she does the changing the diapers in the middle of the night. I do it during the day. 
Um, so just like little things like that that we've, you know, come accustomed to over the last couple of months that's really worked out in our favor. But yeah, no, she's she's the trooper. She's the one getting up in the middle of the night. Even I'm even while I'm in the off season now too, she lets me get my sleep. So a lot of credit to her. I was so worried like about the whole di- diaper changing thing. It's not that bad. It's really not. Yeah, and it, I, I think know. it's different when it's one of your own. I think for me the yes. uh, the, the one moment that stands out to me, John, of like what well, the most nervous I was, and it it didn't hit me until I was gonna take the, the turn into my neighborhood, coming home with our with our firstborn. <laughs> And it was wondering how the dog was going to react. <laughs> like, I was pretty mm-hmm. confident. We got a yellow lab. Like, labs are awesome with humans. But, like, I was a little concerned. Yeah. Like, yeah. what if we put her put her on the coffee table, you know, in her, in her carrier, and he just comes in and knocks her over? Like, that was the most nervous I probably was throughout this whole thing because I love my dog. But, like, you can't choose a dog over your child, right? So, <laughs> exactly. how, how, how's, how's your pup? I know you're close to your pup. Like, how's, how's your pup yeah. reacting to all this? No, they uh, they did so good. So we have an older dog and a younger one, and our older one, um, he's been around kids for years now, and he's he's done well with everyone. But our younger one, he's only a year old, and so we and he doesn't have nearly as much as much experience with kids as our older one. So we were really worried about that. But I mean, they've both done so good with her, and it's, it's crazy how smart dogs are. Like you bring in Georgia into the house and they just instantly know like this yep. is a baby. Mm-hmm. I got to be way more chill. And they're they're just so good and so gentle around her. And so like now we can just have her on the floor and just like have her doing her thing. And the dogs are just walking around. They just know like she's there. Uh-huh. Give her little kisses here and there. But they're, they're they've been so good, like more than we could ask for. So it's been great. That's hilarious. Yeah, we are. Our, 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 well, now he's six years old, was three when we brought him home. Dude's like doing backflips off the couch. <laughs> we bring a baby in and he was completely nurturing. So thank God for they that. Just know. I know. John, you're, you're growing up before our very eyes, man. Like I said, since we've last talked to you, you've gotten married, you've added a kid. Uh, you just wrapped up season three in the NFL. You are, I think we can call you a, a, a vet now. How much are you kind yeah. of enjoying your your NFL lifestyle, I guess, for that matter? It's been like more than I could have ever dreamed of and, you know, truly a dream come true for me. Um, it's what I've wanted since I was a kid and it's, you know, more than I could have asked for. Getting to play, you know, in the biggest environments and the biggest games every Sunday. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that, but it's a whirlwind, man. Like it goes fast. The seas, the days are long, but the months and, you know, the months and the years go by even faster. So, um, you know, I've loved it every second of it being where I'm at. Me and my wife are settled in the good area. Um, and so it's, it's been great, man. We love every second of it. So in college, the season's a lot shorter and then you get into the NFL and it's a lot longer, but what are some of the things mm-hmm that you took from your time at Boise State and directly translates into your NFL seasons and what's some of the things that are the biggest differences that you're adapting to? I think one of the biggest things like I took from college is I think my mindset into the NFL. Like when you're in college, like everything you're doing is obviously to like win a championship, but you're also selfishly inside like you want to do everything that you can to put yourself in a position to make it to the next level right and so that comes with preparation and being on top of everything and you know just the culture we had at Boise State and we all understood what it took to win and all the little small you know detail things that went into that have really you know helped me at this level and I think in a lot of aspects put me ahead of a lot of guys from a mindset standpoint and so that's really helped for me um, you know, make that transition. Um, you know, a couple little things that are different. I mean, the weirdest thing for me was when I got into the NFL, like college, you're constantly around your boys. Like it's a weekday night and you're just like chilling. You call up your guys like, Hey, you guys want to hang out, want to come over and you go out over and hang out, go to dinner, whatever. But in the NFL, it's, I mean, it's growing adults. Like you're playing with guys who are like 35 and, you know, married and have three or four kids. So the weirdest part for me was just like once football is over for the day, you like go home to your family and you hang out with your family. So it, that has been, a, that was a little bit weird at first, just trying to get accustomed to that because. I mean, you're with your guys all day, but, you know, in college, you're with them all the time. Weekend, weekday, you know, you're always hanging with the boys. But in the NFL, it's definitely much more like 
business you go to you go to football to do your work and once work's done you go home and then you hang out with your family so um just a couple little things there man you've obviously been doing this for a little while now john so um as you enter year four which i, I believe that means you're getting close to free agency is that is that right yeah last year my rookie co contract this last year, which year, is yeah so hard to believe what is that like i mean like it's it's a cool milestone to probably get to, but maybe obviously a little nerve wracking to get to that as well. So, uh, I mean, it's, there's a big season coming up for you here, which means a really important off season for you, you know, these next yeah. few months. Yeah, definitely going into year four, you know, um, big contract year for me. There's a lot of things that, you know, to take into consideration, like you got, you know, the option of getting extended, which would be amazing. Um, you could play through your entire fourth year and then maybe get extended partway through the season after the season. And then you also have, you know, the option of playing your fourth season out and then you hit the free agency market, which is kind of crazy to think about, you know, being in college and being there for five years and being here for, you know, going into my fourth season now, just having that stability. So it's a little bit weird. Um, but you know, it's, it's crazy. It really is. Um, going into contract year but with the pressure you know I'm, I'm excited for it i think it's good pressure i think it's healthy pressure um to pull the best out of me in hopes to you know better my future and my family's future when you look at what's going on in washington right now i mean uh there's there's a lot of change you guys lose your uh, head coach who has been around the nfl forever you bring in dan quinn you also have a new offensive coordinator so in terms of how you you guys get to process all of this i mean like do you kind of sit at home right now john and, and just kind of wait to see how it all plays out or do you get a chance to go in and meet your new oc and meet your head coach and, and, and hit the ground running how how does it work in the nfl so i mean luckily i'm here um back where i train and stuff and so I just got back from seeing family and I'm planning on going in tomorrow and being able to, you know, put face to face with those guys and shake their hand and, you know, um, let them know who I am and stuff. And, um, you know, put my head in the, have my face in the building, you know, work out in there. But, um, at the end of the day, the NFL is a business. And yeah. so, and, you know, have relationships and meet those guys and, um, you know, there's the other side too, where if you don't meet their fit and what they want from an offense and defensive standpoint or a team standpoint, then, you know, you kind of just got to wait to see what happens. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, you never want to get too comfortable where you're at. Um, mm -hmm. and so it's a waiting game and all you can do at this point, man, is put your head down and work like you would, you know, any other time. We talked to Khalil Shakir this week. He brought up yeah. that word, too. Doesn't, doesn't really like the word comfortable. Doesn't like to be too comfortable. So we're, we're two for two on that there, Kekala. Common thread of yeah. the theme. Right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> JB, speaking of comfort, though, um, coming to college and, you know, being a West Coast kid your entire life, you come into a new home in, in Boise and, and Idaho, which wasn't too far for you, but still someplace totally different. And then you are now on the East Coast, which is totally different than the West Coast yeah. in a lot of ways. But what's it been like creating your home there and getting comfortable? And what have you enjoyed most about it? It's been really cool, man. Um, you know, East Coast is a lot different than the West Coast. Um, the people are different. You know, the vibe's different. Speed's different. Um, a lot more up tempo and upbeat and just in terms of the people and like the way things operate on the east coast um but from my perspective like what i've enjoyed a lot is coming out of college i've always boise was new to me but i only grew up like an hour away so i got to have my own experiences but i still had family and everything close by but coming into the nfl and especially moving out to the east coast where i really hadn't been before um gave my wife and I like an opportunity to do things and learn things on our own without people around to help. Like we went straight from college where we had family and people close by whenever we, for the most part, needed them to get, you know, a married and, you know, moving out all by ourselves and not knowing anyone close by. And so that's been, I think one of my favorite parts of moving out here has just been you know really be, uh, being able to start our family and our lives um the way we want to and you know without really any intervention and so i think that's been fun is just learning all the little things as a family and by yourselves without any help 
if that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do it and figuring it out on, on your own. Um, exactly. I will say this. So this is usually when Cal starts bringing up, you know, where you currently live, the lay of the land, the environment, all these things. Um, I've, I've done enough of these with him now to understand that he's inevitably going to ask you, where's the best place to eat, <laughs> yeah. when he inevitably asks you if he can come watch a play this fall. <laughs> so uh, where, where is it, I guess, there? What, do you, what, what are you thinking? What, what kind of food are you looking for in, uh, if you go visit him in D.C.? Yeah, so what's the best weekend to come and watch a game in D.C.? <laughs> and then when I do land, where's the must-eat place that I need to go to? Because I know you've had enough family trips that you bring people out, and it's like, hey, this is where we're going, and this is when it comes. So give me the lay of the land, J.B. I think if you're going to come watch a game in D.C., you got to hit like early mid-October. Early mid-October, by then, the humidity is usually gone, so it's not unbearable if it's anywhere north of 80 degrees outside because it gets humid as hell here. (laughs) And then, so like that that early mid-October is like the perfect time to come watch a game because the leaves are starting to turn, it's cooled down but it's still warm enough to enjoy a game outside comfortably um and food man we got down in georgetown which is a little subsection of washington dc an italian place called il canal that every time we got family and we got to take them down there because it's real deal authentic italian food like they got the little stamp on their window when you go in saying that they all the all the goods and everything they bring in are from Italy and verified by like the Italian Food Association or whatever they're called. And so that is the spot to hit when you come into town. Now we're talking. I'm there. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I'll see you next season, JB. <laughs> hey, I'll see you there, man. Hey, uh, John, one thing that I've, I've always appreciated about you, man, is like I, I think when you get off to the NFL and you achieve what you've achieved, um, you can use your status to go one way or the other. You can um, obviously kind of use it to uh, maybe for your own benefit or to be stuck up, or you can completely embrace it and, you know, um, help people achieve their dreams. And it was a couple of years ago now But I swear something surfaced on social media where, uh, I don't know if this was out in front of your house or whatever, but you're out just playing in the street with a couple of kids. And it was like right, maybe right after you guys moved in or something like that. So um, Mm -hmm. how much do you just kind of enjoy being this this small town boy that got to play at Boise State and is now off, you know, in the NFL and, and you embrace it in the sense that like, I think you realize at some point in time, maybe you were, were looking up to a guy like, like you are right now, right? So h- how much do you just kind of enjoy the, the role in the spotlight that, that you have? It's so cool, man. Like, in, when you think about it, it just brings you right down back to, like, perspective. Every time I think about, like, dang, like, I'm in the NFL. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> and I just think back of, like, a younger, like, myself, like, and how cool that is. And, like, going back to, like, the story with the kids, it was, like, out in front of our house my rookie year. And these kids, I don't even know how they found out, but they just found out that I played. And, you know, it's just, like, trying to be always your true authentic self. Like, yeah, like, who, like I'm in the NFL, but, like, I still love to go outside and, like, play backyard football and, like, shoot hoops and, like, be a normal person at the end of the day. Like I just try to be, you know, my true authentic self and who I've always been. So I try to stay true to that. And, you know, it's, it's really a cool deal that when you sit back and think on where I'm at now and where I've come from, like it's, it's unreal. That's awesome. JB. I think you've done an awesome job representing not only yourself and your family, but Boise State and, you know, seeing you in this stage and light, but, to your point, just the same same dude and, and genuine and true to yourself. And I feel like whenever we catch up, it's like we were just back in the locker room together, man, BS and after man. practice. And me trying to it figure is. out how the heck to get off of your blocks because I <laughs> could not do it for the life of me. And then, you know, figure figure a thing or two out once you hang out with JB enough. I got to say, John, like, again, man, it, it, I, I think it's unfair to compare any Boise State tight end to you and what you did and more than anything, your character. Mm-hmm. Um, you paying attention? to the current 85 though over at Boise State because uh, Matt Lauder he, he's a little bit of a beast man and I say this with, with the most respect and highest of, of, of you know compliment to Matt uh, the way he plays it actually does kind of remind me of of the former 85. He does man like watching him on the field 
he's not only able to do it the pass game, making some, you know, tremendous catches going up in the air and making plays. And especially, you know, towards the end of the season, they really started to feed him the rock and, mm-hmm. you know, make some big plays on the ground. But you watch him in the, in the run game too, dude, he's got like this tenacity about him and the way you can just tell when the play is going. I, I watch the play, but I try to focus on the tight end position as well. And he's, he's a guy that doesn't stop till the whistle goes. And you can tell, like, he's trying to dump dudes. He's trying to be mean and nasty. And I love watching him and what he's able to do. And, you know, the, the sky's, you know, forever for him yeah. and what he can, you know, accomplish. And so I'm excited for him. And, you know, hopefully they keep involving him more in the offense because he's got, I think, a lot more to offer. I, I agree with you. And actually, I can tell you this, uh, Bush Hamden studying uh, NFL tape. But, you know, he's been studying stuff to try to see how they can utilize him more. And I know a guy that they like is he's watching some Lions film the other day with Sam Laporta. Um, real, real quick, John, there's another guy I wanted to ask you about as we, as we get close to, to wrapping this thing up here. Um, Kent Riddle, your, your former position mm-hmm. coach at Boise State. Now that he is, he's, he's no longer kind of in the, he's no longer in the game. I, I've loved yeah. to get to know like a different side of Kent. I almost like, feel like he's like Papa Kent now or Papa Rid, whatever you want to call him. But how, how much do you guys still kind of stay in contact and keep up? And, and what has he meant to you? Um, not, not only, I guess, what did, what, what did he mean to you when you were at Boise State, but what does he mean to you even beyond your, your coach-player relationship? Yeah, dude, Rid has been a guy that I still keep in touch with to this day. Like, we don't talk all the time, but, you know, every once in a while, like, I'll shoot him a text or he'll shoot me a text or give me a call um just to see what's up whenever i come back in town i try to see him if he's available and he's a guy that you know has meant the world to me in terms of like who i am as a person how i conduct myself and like what i want to be like he obviously took a chance on me out of high school and saw something in me that maybe i didn't see in myself and developed me into the football person and hard worker that i am today and I can't thank him enough for that and what he's done for me. Like, I was, like, 225, scrawny, and, like, a pass catcher coming out of high school. And he showed me, like, by far, I think, in my opinion, too, like, the best tight end coach in college. Like, what he was able to do for me, becoming a blocker and mm-hmm. to do it so technically sound, like, Coming out of college into the NFL, there was hardly any like transition time for me as a blocker just because I was already leaps and bounds ahead of so many other tight ends, even in like that were older than me that were already established in the league just because of what he taught me in college that I know not hardly anyone is learning. And then too, just like the mindset and like what it meant to work hard for what you want. He taught me that, you know, all five years. And so um, red means the world to me, man. And I love that guy. Yeah, He's, he's awesome. John, you're awesome. I, I was really looking forward to this. It, it lived up to it. Uh, maybe we can catch up with you again uh, at, at some point in time, but make sure you tell Gino hi, tell, <laughs> tell Keegan congrats, uh, hug your baby girl, Georgia and throw the dogs a, a couple of extra treats. You, you still squatting with them, by the way, like, like you were during COVID, the, the at-home workouts, or you can, we over True, that I get, now? I could throw, I could throw both of them on my back now. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, no, now I just got the squat bar and the the plates on the side, man. All right, no more, no more COVID dog squats. That's good, good buddy, <laughs> John. We appreciate, you, bud. Appreciate you guys, man. Take Thanks, care. JB. Yeah, John Bates, man. Like again, one one of my one of my all-time favorites at Boise State. Oh, His family was tremendous. He's tremendous, and. I think the thing that's fun for me, K. Kala, is like when when the rest of the world and, and, and the NFL get to experience the guys that I that I cover at Boise State. Like yeah. it was so funny when Shaq went underdrafted and we told everybody you should have drafted him earlier mm-hmm. and he was I mean you could argue he's the Bills best wide receiver over the last yeah. you know, seven, eight weeks of the season, including the playoffs. Right. John Bates, like same deal. You knew like that community was gonna love him. And then you see on social media he's out playing <laughs> in the yeah. streets with kids, just like at the goodness of his heart. And so yeah. I, I love it when stuff like that happens. Yeah, I think both of those guys have a great perspective on there's so many things that are outside of their control, right? JB talked about being uncomfortable or not getting too comfortable. Yep. Khalil said he doesn't like being comfortable. And I think them understanding, hey, there's so many things that I have no control over, but the fundamentals and the things that I've learned at Boise State, I'm using that now to help me in this 
phase of my career in life and both of them with the growth mindset to be able to continue to grow into that. Yeah, 19 catches for John, one short of a career high for him. Uh, I think the sky's the, the, the limit for him as he enters his final year of his rookie deal and hopefully he cashes in on that thing because man, he deserves to and uh, awesome to see that he's growing up and his family's growing too. So we appreciate John Bates for joining us today. For K. Calicaniho, I'm Jay's Tusk. This is Jay's Sports Bar serving the Idaho sports community. Thank you.